within yourself, it's a sense of freedom and escape. If you really know how to listen to the mountains, I guess you can learn a lot. The spirit of, of this kind of place is what draws me. To run high for me is an escape, or in another way, I guess it would be coming back to where I really want to be. Because um, it's, it's something I'm drawn to. It's, uh, <sighs> There's just no better feeling than being up here. That's the philosophy which unites this group of runners gathered here in Sevinia in the Italian Alps for the first sky running world championship. A witness to this historic event is the man who first developed the concept of sky running. Sky Runner World Championship is the first big event, the culmination of our five year history, officially recognized as the 20 competitions which are valid for qualification. And so here we are in Sevilla with 150 athletes, the best high altitude athletes of today, representing 20 nations across four continents. To qualify for this championship, the Sky Runners compete in some of the most grueling races in the world. Himalayan plains of Tibet to the highest peaks of Europe, Asia and the Americas, these men and women bridge the gap between sky and earth. They run at altitudes of up to 8,000 meters, using their incredible aerobic power to take human fitness to the very edge of endurance. Over the past five years, the medical team attached to the Sky Running Peak Performance Project have been monitoring the effects of such exertions on the athletes. Tests on the heart have shown no adverse results, so the latest research studies the central nervous system at altitude and the effect on the brain. There's an optimum relationship between the maximum capacity to express strength, speed and power, the limits beyond which damage can occur, and this can cause serious medical problems. Our task is to train the athletes in order to get the maximum performance without risk. Two days before the championship in Servinia comes a sharp reminder that life itself is not without risk. In training, American sky runner Lyndon Ellefson falls to his death down a hidden crevasse. Lyndon was a great friend and he was, uh, he's a person that promoted the sport everywhere he went and it, and it was his life to do this stuff. As tragic and sad and as touched as we are, we also have to realize that, it, you know, it's the mountains and, and these things happen and, and Lyndon would have wanted it that way, you know. L Lyndon wouldn't want anything to stop because of this, because the mountains was his life and mountain running was his life. The race goes on and as befits the World Championship, this course offers mountain trails, ski runs, moraine and glacier. The circular route covers 26.2 miles, 42 kilometers, to the top of the Brighthorn, and then back down to Sevinia. Amongst the contenders for the first Sky Running World Championship is American Matt Carpenter, the world's fastest man at altitude. I've done so many races, and I don't actually ever remember being in a race and thinking, well, this is not the World Championship, so I'm not going to try to beat this guy. And on the converse, I can't imagine being in this race and, and feeling bad and then suddenly this thought's going to pop into my mind, well this is the world championships, I need to do more. Mexican Ricardo Mejia holds many Sky Marathon titles but none in Europe. All races are different, but I prepare for all of them in the same way. Although I will pay special attention igual, to this one because it's the world championship para esa es un and the runners here del mundo are of a very high standard. Mayor cantidad de gente. Italian Bruno Bruno, another veteran skyrunner, will be competing on his own back doorstep. Here it is very important for me to win. I particularly care because this is my country, my surroundings. All my fans are here to see me, and my family is here too. But in an event like this, anything can happen. The athletes who have made it to the start line have already achieved so much just by qualifying. Their reward? between four and seven hours of extreme physical and mental suffering.
From the very start, the test begins. The first stage requiring an almost vertical climb. Matt Carpenter tackles it with enthusiasm, others are more methodical in their approach. As they reach the first snow line at Kolfurgen, Bruno Bruno leads the group. The women athletes, who started half an hour earlier than the men, are being outpaced. Whoa. Carpenter has dropped back a little, so he tries some slippery tactics to make up time. Nearing the halfway point, Mehir and Bruno vie for the lead, having put a considerable distance between themselves and the rest of the pack. remainder of the field comes through, it's time to stock up on energy for the long, steady 1,334 vertical meters climb up to the top of the bright hall. Local cheer encourages Brunod on the last leg to the summit. Mejia, tenacious as ever, is close behind. Further down the field, Matt Carpenter is paying the price for having run and won the US Sky Marathon only two weeks before the competition. Long way to go. It's a long way up, but when you reach the top... It's Brunod who starts the descent first, throwing himself down snowfields towards his hometown. Mejia continues his pursuit, but, barring a disaster, he's chasing second place. Just as he dreamt, Bruno Bruno crosses the line first to become the inaugural sky-running world champion in front of his friends and family. Carpenter finishes over an hour behind a distant 11. But for Bruno conquering the bright hall is possibly the pinnacle of his sky-running career.